I'm Julia Hargreaves and um, I'm located in the North Yorkshire Dales in the UK and um, that's my cat. I'm co-director of a company with my husband, it exists of entirely both of us only, called Blue Skies Research Limited. So I was one of the founding editors of the journal Geoscientific Model Development and that has been a huge amount of fun and very educational for me as well. So when we started it, not everybody was um, very positive about the idea of publishing models and in, in any detail and making code available and things like that. Uh, although a section of the community clearly were enough to get the journal off the ground. I stopped being an executive editor some time ago and now I'm just an editor and um, no, I, I still, I keep thinking I should give it up because I've been doing it too long, but it's still really interesting. I see these, I, I don't know, I'm quite a geek, quite a big geek. And, um, and I see a model paper about some modeling, some thing in some way that I hadn't realized you could do. And it's, I think it's, it's all really cool. I know it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> The challenge is to stay calm and professional at all times and that's really um, a really good life skill because authors are often feeling quite you know upset and sensitive and you just it would be so easy to make it worse and you've got to not make it worse <laughs> for them and, and try and help them see a way through sometimes when the, when they can't I mean, I know having having authored papers, I get incredibly cross <laughs> with with reviewers and editors and things. But so you know, you know what it's like from the other side as well. So when submitting papers to GMD in particular, it's really important to read the peer review requirements and um, do really the very best you can towards being very close to those because they're quite strict about them, and it can really delay the paper if it's not if it's not compliant with those. But the thing you shouldn't do is if you've had your paper rejected from some more traditional science journal, is get it and just submit it to GMD because it, it just won't fit because it will be focused towards the science results, which might be a bit weak. That might be why it got rejected. And it might have lots of interesting modeling science in there that, that needs adding much more detail to. So for reviewers, I have to tell you about the worst nightmare as an editor is when you get some agreed reviewers and they don't submit their review because this deadline passes and you realize you haven't got reviews and suddenly you you're upset and you know the authors are upset and you've got to try and start the process almost like starting from the beginning so if you cannot do a review you have to just not agree to do it and it's much better to just suggest one of your colleagues as it would be a better reviewer because often the best reviewers really come from somebody that is suggested by a reviewer who can't do the review because they're one step removed from whatever other information we might have. You probably want to wait till you've got a bit of experience and, and sort of confidence because you've got to have a bit of a thick skin. I'm not sure I've really got a thick skin, but develop a thick skin. It's a good way of developing a thick skin. <laughs> Postdocs and, and beyond are really good to have at GMD because it's, it's about the sort of frontier of modelling which tends to be younger people who are directly involved in it. The older scientists tend to be in more overview positions. Well, it was the EGS when I started in about 1996, and I've been about every other year since then. And then a few years after it became the EGU, I realized it was EGU. So a bit confused about how many times exactly. But since 2020, I've only attended virtually. But we've been every year since then, because it's so easy. We're both going to attend online, because uh, we realised we've got another trip coming up in um, in May, soon after. So we thought it was a best to, to not fly over. To not worry about not knowing anything going into a session, because sometimes you can, you can really get an overview. If you just let the details go and you just sort of get, get an idea for the status of that particular subfield, really, and what the key problems are. And I don't think that's that hard to come away with. And it can be really sort of interesting and useful later.
goodbye everybody and um, i hope you all enjoy the egu general assembly and um eat some schnitzel for me